Oh, you want my treasure? You can have it. I left everything that should go to charity in one piece. <laughs> Do you guys know about The Completionist? He's a YouTuber who completes video games. That's his like, that's his shtick. You know, we all have a shtick out there. Him completing video games, that's his shtick, okay? I don't watch him, Gerard. I think his name is Gerard, right? I don't watch him very often, but every now and again, here and there, to and fro, as many people have said, and by many, I just mean me, honestly. For some of his reviews, they're, they're kind of interesting. Uh, I mostly know him through the uh, podcast that Skill Up is on, The Friends Per Second podcast because he's one of the friends per second it appears but it also appears that he may all be a criminal on top of a gamer so which, which is very scary if i'm going to be honest with you there's been a couple of videos i've released earlier today about how the charity that he has run is possibly a scam i want to take a look at it a little bit to see what's going on Fraud per second. <laughs> it may it may indeed be fraud per second, which I'm really worried about. I hope it's not true because he seems like a cool guy and YouTubers that I like enjoy his presence, which definitely makes me sad. But but, but you know, if it is, it is what it is, if it is. So I guess we have to find out, right? He always seemed nice. Yeah, he's the guy who spent a lot of money to be able to get a, the physical copies of lots of games for game preservation. He says he cares a lot about game preservation. You know, he's uh, has a, a charity specifically for, if I remember correctly, Alzheimer's and dementia research, right? Where he had a bunch of smaller game devs who wanted some eyes on their game show up. And that was basically the show, the show. Imagine GDQ, but instead of people, you know, going fast in games, it was devs going slow in games because devs usually don't know how to play their shitty games. I'm, I'm, they're not shitty. They're good games. They're, of course, of course. <laughs> Anyways, they had devs come on to, you know, show show off their games, have some people play them, do some, do some like impromptu reviews, just enjoy them to get some eyes on on on, on some good like indie games and stuff like that while they raise money for dementia. But a, a, a lot of people are saying that they've been squatting on that money and not using it correctly. So I guess it's time to find out. This is from uh, Carl Jacobst, a guy who talks about gaming scams, stuff like that. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, all the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom, and all that money goes... Oh yeah, that's that's another thing he does as well, where he, he says that his mom passed away of early onset Alzheimer's or dementia, one of the two. All men We're going to call it Almentia for the time being until we figure out which one and that's basically his his hook to really to, to really talk about that. So if it's true that he's not been using the money correctly, and then, like, talking about this in honor of his mo mother who passed away. Oh, good goodness. That's that's fiendish. That's devilish, if I'm going to be honest with you. That's terrible. Dementia research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money, and we help them do their thing. This is Gerard Khalil, well known online as The Completionist. For more than a decade, his YouTube series where he completes games 100% has been very successful and he has built a very large and respected brand. Gerard is very well liked within the gaming community, and I myself have been a fan of his YouTube content for many years. In 2018, Gerard helped create the IndieLand Charity Marathon. This is where indie develop- Oop, Whoops. Yo, his middle name is his middle name is Dragon Rider. Do you see that, bro's middle name is actually Dragon Rider. I know a couple people on my Twitter who would also call themselves Dragon Rider, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. But I guess we'll 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 put that on the gray area of his morality so far. In 2018, Gerard helped create the IndieLand Charity Marathon. This is where indie developers get to come together and showcase their games. It gave a spotlight to lesser-known developers, and it also raised money for a good cause. All of the money well, raised really? by yeah, IndieLand goes, golf on goes there to too? the curse, Open Hand Foundation, the a non-profit organization that helps support dementia research. The Open Hand Foundation was founded by Gerard and his family in 2003, after Gerard's mother was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. However, it didn't officially 
officially become a non-profit until 2014, after she unfortunately passed away. Indyland has been quite successful in raising money for charity. They generally raise over $100,000 per year, and according to their website have raised over 600000 The marathons do well, and often attract very popular figures in the gaming realm, and even celebrities. From YouTube influencers to gaming developers and publishers, many parties actively get involved to help raise money. According That's really scary because he just did another another one of these where it, it was a couple about a week ago right if anybody remembers really recently because i heard him talking about it on the friend on friends per second that he just did one of these so you're telling me i was actually thinking about joining one of these next time and and, and, and like helping donate or something and you're telling me this man was scooping money off the top this whole time to their website, the Open Hand Foundation supports the University of California, San Francisco. And in 2020, Gerard said that Open Hand was one of the- Wait, and he had Sea of Stars on the Sea of Stars devs? What the heck? UCSF's main support partners. Uh, currently working with the University of San Francisco, and we're kind of one of their main um, their main funding uh, support partners uh, going into all of this. Um, Beyond- and, and Five Nights at Freddy's movie- Superstar Matt Pat was there too? This is this is terrible. This, according to Gerard, Open Hand raises money for organizations all over the world. Um my father, my brother, and I started a foundation called the Open Hand Foundation that raises money for dementia research and treatment for organizations all over the world. However, the truth is that since its inception in 2014, the Open Hand Foundation has not contributed a single cent to any organization. That can't be true. Say it ain't so. I don't want to. I don't want to believe this is true. Not one cent. You're telling me this man is sitting on on six hundred over six hundred thousand dollars that he's just taken for dementia research. For the past ten years, they have raised over six hundred thousand dollars, and it's all just sitting in their bank account. Despite Open Hand saying the money goes to help fund research, and despite the fact that everyone believes their money is going to a worthwhile cause, this is simply not the case. <gasps> Wait, here's here's what's happening. I got it. It is actually going to dementia research. He gets the money, and then Gerard starts googling about. It starts Googling, you know, like on, 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 on like WebMD about dementia and starts going on Google Scholar about the newest research about dementia. And then he uses the money for like DoorDash and stuff like that. That's that would make perfect sense then. That make perfect sense then. But we'll see if that's actually what's going on. We'll see. We'll see his evidence. Because Open Hand is a non-profit, their tax filings are publicly available. Since 2014, their yearly filings have all shown the same behavior. For example- You thought I was going to make a much worse joke? I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad- I'm not a bad guy. I don't do bad things, okay? I'm not that type of- I'm not that type of fella. In 2022, they received $117,000 in contributions. Okay. They paid $11,000 in expenses, leaving them with $106,000 in excess revenue. This cash was then added to their existing stockpile of cash, which now totals $655,000. Every year since 2014, it's been the same. Money is received, some expenses are deducted, and the cash is just left in their account. Normally in these filings, a non-profit is supposed to state where their profit goes. Obviously, if a chat oh yeah so okay so they're either really fucking up when it comes to their taxes which could get him in a lot of trouble because that's a lot of money or he's stealing it he's stealing it it's one of the two he's either not filing his taxes correctly or he's stealing it so I guess we'll Harry have to see. raises money, they are supposed to give it to an organization. However, this has never happened with the Open Hand Foundation. In 10 years of filings, they have not dispersed a single dollar to anyone. They have kept everything for themselves. Let's see. Net assets or fund balances. Total net assets or fund balances at the beginning of the year. The year, end of the year, figure reported or prior years. Amount from A27. Other increases not included in line two, itemized, $442,000. Decreases, not include line two, itemized, total net assets or fund balances at the end of the year. That's four and five, part two. And that's $400,000. Yeah, that's, 
that's how much money they're sitting on. Yeah, they're still claiming that that's they have that much money. Oh no. We'll just video open hands filing and filing and responses. Well, let's take a look. Dear Carl, thank you for regarding your financial activities. Oh, oh, they responded, it seems. It's 2015. Let's check recently. 2016. Oh, yeah, they, they got holy crap. They got all the filings. They got every single filing on them. That's nasty. Yeah, obviously, the last filing that they would have done was in 2022. Well, let's take a take a deeper look. I can just do this. For calendar year 2022 or tax year beginning uh, on the 1st of January 2022, return a private foundation. It's an IRS filing. Yeah, they are a 501c3 exempt private foundation. Will they, will they say that they are? Analysis of revenue and expenses. Contributions, gifts, grants received. And that would be, they said they had got $117,000 this year. Yeah, 117000 Fees, accounting fees would be $700. Other expenses, they say they spent $10,000. Total operating administrative expenses, they said $11,000. I don't know what they're spending $11,000 on. Maybe it's plane tickets to get people out there. Who knows? Maybe the internet for Discord calls are really expensive. I'm not sure. But they said they're spending $11,000 for something. Who knows? Subtract line 26 from 12. Excess revenue over expenses. And they said they made there. They have $106,000 that they made this year. Right? Cash non-interest bearing. Book A value, yeah, that's $549,000. Book B value, $655,000. Cash, not interest bearing. Is amounts in this, the end of the year amounts only. Yeah, that's, yeah. This is all of the money that they, that they ever collected. It's just sitting there. <laughs> Total assets to be com completed by all fillers. See the instructions. Six hundred fifty-five thousand dollars payable grants. They say they have none. Related earnings, accumulated income, endowed in other funds. Yeah, that's all the money. Total net assets. That's all of the money. What are they doing with it? Why are they just sitting on it? What's happening right now? What What are they? What's their plan? Do they Do they just not know how to spend money? <laughs> Is that what's going on here? They just forgot how to spend money. I guess they forgot how to give it away. Well, let's check out. Let's Paid check eleven thousand dollars in expenses. Leave they support the UCSF to a private and personal matter within their family. They have a quote from David Kessler, the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine, thanking them for their gift. But the account normally in these filings a foundation in 10 years of filings they have not dispersed a single dollar to anyone they have kept everything for themselves this is obviously do they think they would get away with this i don't know because they're 501c3 it's really easy to, to just check up all their tax filings because all of these are public every single dollar that they spend as, as long as they're not lying to the irs which i think you really shouldn't there's no reason why you would think that you'd be able to get away with this the only time where you would be able to hide where money is going is by saying that there's more or less expenses than than there really were so you would have to you know take take the go go to the expenses and be like and be like oh i'm just gonna put like a couple thousand in my pocket but i'm gonna claim them as expenses right or i'm just gonna pay myself more or say that this money's going to go to something with bob but like writing a little bigger number and then skimming some off the top that's what i was imagining that was happening but them just not spending any of the money is just that's curious but it's super weird because what are they doing with it is it gone dude is he planning to do something else with it why did he not spend it in 10 years it's it's really weird Cause he's not, he's, it doesn't seem like he's taking any, any money. It seems, well, I don't know. I guess they could like, I'm not sure if they went through to add up all the money to see if it's still there. Like if they've been, if it's just been in the account and over 10 years, they've just been like pulling, slowly pulling like, you know, you know, small amounts of money from it over time. I don't know. Alarming. Their website clearly states they support the UCSF. And they have a quote from David Kessler, the dean of the UCSF School of Medicine, thanking them for their gift. 
But the interesting thing about David Kessler is that he was fired as the Dean of the UCSF School of Medicine in 2007. Seven <laughs> years before Open Hand was even officially registered. Um, I needed to find out what was happening. So I yo, contacted what? Open Hand okay. and asked them why they haven't made any contributions in the past 10 years. And this is the response I got, which was written by Jacques Khalil, Gerard's brother. They claim that before their official registration as a Okay. Well, let's actually read this. So let's let's do this. So they had an actual explanation. So let's see. Dear Co, thank you for your inquiry regarding the financial activities of the Open Hands Foundation. We recognize your concerns and we're glad to offer clarity on the operating uh, on the operations and mission. Open Hands was a I don't care. Since our official registration as a foundation, we have been evaluating potential beneficiaries who align with our vision. You're telling me for 10 years you've been looking for somebody to give the money to, but you haven't found it yet? What is this type of journey? What, what, are, are they soul searching? Is, is Gerard and, and, and his brother, like, they have got, like, walking sticks and they're climbing to the top of mountains to, to find monks meditating up there and asking them if they do good dementia research to be able to give their money to? Like, what, what are you talking about? He is the dragon? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, wait, you're right. He's called Dragon Rider, but he is the dragon and he's sitting on his hoard of money. Holy crap, maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe what he's doing. Oh, I got it. He gets the money. Okay, here's the plan he gets the money. And then what he was going to do is make a video about him. <laughs> my, my troll. Right? There's a video of him. It, he rents out like a really big parking garage. Or, yeah, a parking garage. All right. And then he gets a bunch of people who have been diagnosed with dementia early onset specifically because they have to be agile. And... And they, he starts them at the bottom, and they have to battle royale their way to the top of the, of, of the parking garage where he's sitting on a massive pile of six of six hundred thousand dollars in ones. Well, he, maybe he wanted to get to a million, a million dollars in ones, and then they have to battle him at the end to be able to get all of the money. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a yakuza boss fight. <laughs> They can work together, you know, it's it's like a Lord of the Flies, but it's like Lord of Dementia, all right? And maybe he's hoping that, I don't, I don't know, they just they just won't make it or something. It would be a really good video, and then he would take, and then he would take the ad revenue from that video, and then that would go to him. It's very possible. He's, he's the dragon. Or maybe, since he is the dragon, he's in like a big dragon onesie. He's in like dragon armor, and he has a flamethrower. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and but there's like a box of weapons, all right, in, in like a first aid kit, just in case they got hurt on the way up, so they can heal and then they can start the boss fight. All right, maybe it's like a dark, maybe it's like Dark Souls, so he expects them to fail and he throws them off the edge of the parking garage, and they have to make the trek all the way back up through the other dementia patients that 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 he's like um put in there. Maybe there's some booby traps or something too that that could be possible. You know, just just some 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 incredible stuff. <laughs> He should turn, yeah, he should turn the cash into gold bars, and then he should sit on top of them. My money! Uh, dragon scales, suit, armor, real flamethrower action is ex is expensive. What do you think the ten, what do you think the, like, ten thousand dollars in expenses every year goes to? Oh my gosh, that's it! He's skimming some off the top every year, but not too much. To be able to put to another pile, to be able to rent out the parking garage and get all the stuff ready to, for, for, for the dementia patient battle royale that he's going to be doing. <laughs> it's expensive, and it's been expended. You want my treasure? You can have it. I left everything. <laughs> Uh, oh, you want my treasure? You can have it. I left everything that should go to charity in one piece. <laughs> oh, and then when we made videos about how he hasn't spent it, he laughed. As Gerard opened the Carl Jacobs video calling him out for not spending a single cent of the charity money. 
and he laughed. We could game for this and play it on Indie Land. Holy crap, we should. We should make this a game and then play it on Indie. Gerard D. Completionist. <laughs> No, whoa, no, 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 Gerard D. Completionist. Holy. Wait, no, no, no. Maybe Gerard D. Dragon. Something like that. That that could be there, too. Holy shit. It's all coming. To fuck. It's all coming together. The D stands for Dragon Rider. <laughs> oh, man. A boy who live streams and uploads YouTube content set sail for the grand <laughs> for Gerard's hidden charity stash. Shark, I'm gonna become the king of the content. Become the king of the content. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's so he ate the dragon fruit. That's why they call him Dragon Rider. That's why they call him Dragon Rider. It's so good. <laughs> the king of the content. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. New manga idea, king of the content. The <laughs> uh, One Piece, it's not real. Content creators have been searching it for it for 10 years and still haven't found head or tail of it. It's just a legend. And then Carl Jacobs and, and some ordinary gamers drop a video. Straight up, it's the one piece. It's real. It's <laughs> it's real. It's real. Maybe, maybe, maybe Gerard's treasure was the friends we made along. Maybe Gerard's treasure was the indie games we played along the way. You ever think about that? Maybe that's what the treasure really is at the end. <laughs> Anyways, um, just so you know, we haven't, we haven't, we've barely read this at all. Let's 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 go back to what they were talking about. We've been dedicated to ensuring that our fundraising efforts are channeled effectively towards the cause. Since our official registration, we've been we've been looking for an entity that aligns with our visions, entities that could use our funds efficiently and effectively without a substantial portion being diverted to administrative expenses. This vig this vigilant approach to selecting our beneficiaries was reinforced by a personal commitment to honor the memory of the individual for whom the foundation was created. Prior to our official Official registration as a foundation, we donated body parts for re Huh? You donated body parts to research? How'd you get those? Oh my gosh. Gerard D. Tuber, the pirate who's been taking people's body parts. Do you think he do you think he hoards body parts too? Not only not only is he holding my hoarding money, but also people have donated body parts to to them. And they also haven't spent it this whole time. So there's just like a really Gerard D. Yeah, Gerard D. Completionist. All right. And then they, there's like a really big industrial freezer full of body parts. That they, we've since the inception of our charity, we've been looking for a We've been looking for an organization that aligns with our views to give these body parts. We just haven't found one yet. And made financial contributions to an institution that, in our view, made insufficient progress for the fight against these debilitating conditions. This prior experience has taught us the importance of careful consideration in our partnerships and the reason why we continue to search for a proper partner and recipient of our donations. I'm going to be honest with you, as somebody who's done like charities before or in like charity drives, you, you can figure out if if you want to donate to a charity in like a like a weekend of research. If you're doing like a like doing like a lot and trying to find like a really good charity, a weekend of research. It it don't take 10 years. It does not take 10 years. It it has it has not and will not ever take 10 years. You're you're losing your mind, okay? Even if it's like a difficult one, right? When it comes to donating to like you know, Palestine, where you genuinely want to worry about, you know, the money going into the wrong hands, you can figure out a charity to donate to in a in an afternoon. It does not take 10 years. <laughs> Maybe when he said they donate uh, across the world, Ger uh, Gerard D. Completionist and his brother have 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 searched the, the world, searched the globe, looking for someone to give this money to, but they just can't. You know, do you think that they're good? So their their whole response is that they're like, 
They're begging, please, someone take our money, someone please. No one, just no one will take our money. So we can't spend it, no one wants to take our money. <laughs> I would also like to address the regulatory framework within which a 501c3 organizations like ours operates. We are subject to stringent regulations and are required to maintain compliance with federal laws governing charitable organizations. Yeah, that's why people are thinking that this may be illegal. Our operations and financial activities are transparent to regulatory bodies, including the IRS, and we adhere to the, the laws governing 501s. Should there be any irregularities or misuse of funds, agencies such as the Department of Justice would intervene. Guy, listen, we haven't been sued by the feds, so it's all right. The feds haven't stopped us yet, so it's probably fine. <laughs> Just don't worry. If, if something bad happens, the feds will get us, so we're fine now. Chill out. You think Gerard D. Completionist and everybody else working for the organization, they're like going around the office now. They're like, he stands up. He stands up from his seat. He goes. The audit, the audit is coming. Ger Gerard, what, what do you mean? The, the what? What did you say? The audit is coming. No, 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 not, not the audit. You just can't. You're lying. You're lying. That can't be real. Shut up. I'm not lying. I can smell it in the air. You can hear it. Listen closely. Over the horizon, they see the, the fucking IRS coming with the new money that Joseph R. Biden gave them. Two lanterns. <laughs> Run. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming watch yourself we understand any charitable organization like ours accountability is paramount and we remain meticulous in our financial decisions you've made none you've made no you've made no financial decisions there haven't been the money sitting there there's no financial decisions there's absolutely none that's crazy as we actively search for a partnership that meets our high standards, we welcome any recommendation. They're like, oh, 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 you don't like that we've been sitting on the money? Oh, you don't like that we've been sitting on the money? Um, uh, tell me somebody to give it to. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, you think you know better than us? Well, go ahead. Send them. Go ahead. Send them. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. Go on, boy. Go on, boy. Send us your recommendation. Who do you think should get the money, huh? They've been very meticulous. That's why they haven't spent it. They, they, you don't get it. You don't get it. Anyways. Jack Khalil, Gerard's brother. They claim that before their official registration as a foundation, they donated body parts for research. A strange claim that I don't believe can be true of a charity. That's likely referring to a private and personal matter within their family and would have nothing to do with open hand. They claim they made financial contributions to an institution that made insufficient progress. Essentially, open hand is claiming that because they made donations, I still want to know where they donated those body parts to and how they got them. Confirm because it wasn't public at the time. This means that it is acceptable to not pass along any of the money the public has given them until they find someone they deem worthy. The obvious question arises. If they have been looking for a beneficiary since 2014, why has Gerard been claiming they support organizations across the world, including the UCSF and the Alzheimer's Association? That is true because they've been saying that they've been giving money to places around the world. We support all these organizations that have been that have been working on dementia research but he hasn't given a single dollar to any of them what d d d when he says support does he mean like spiritual support <laughs> like he just he just really likes them and so he's like yeah you get you guys keep on going you 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 do your thing don't let anybody stop you go ahead thoughts and prayers <laughs> thoughts and prayers does do i have any artist here do i have any artists at all can somebody can we get a rendition of of Gerard there's there's two anime renditions that I want to see of Gerard if if it's possible if anybody feels like they want to do this here's some ideas okay I'd love to see it for one Sukuna from JJK inside his like inner domain 
you know how he like sits on like a, a massive his his silly little pile of of like ox skulls can you change that to money and the one sitting on top is gerard <laughs> and and one of him like as he has to be like he has to be like goldie roger but gerard d completionist something like that something like that there has to be a there has to be a one piece edit of him gerard d roger Anyways, if anybody if anybody thinks that that's a cool idea and they have any artistic capabilities, I'd love to see it. You'd be doing the world a service. Truly really one of the most talented meme orators of our generation. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've been working real hard on it. We are raising money for dementia research in honor of my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more. Why is he claiming wait, they're the working money is with actually them. given to people? Wait a second. Did he ever wait? Did he ever claim that he gave them money or that he just supports them? Are they deem worthy? <clears throat> the obvious question arises. If they've been looking for a beneficiary since 2014, why has Gerard been claiming they support organizations across the world, including the UCSF and the Alzheimer's Association? We are raising money for dementia research in honor of my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more. Why is he... Wait. This whole time, he never said that he was donating to them. He just said that he was working with them. What does that mean? What does that mean? He never said raising... <laughs> Raising money for them? Did he say raising money for them? Because I just heard working for them. Do you think... Did he claim that he was raising... Yeah, it's obviously heavily implied, but I think that's the point. Especially since he knows that they haven't spent the money. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta look this back up. We're going, we're going to, the, to the last Friends Per Second episode. They haven't deleted it yet. I don't believe so. We gotta go back. We gotta go way back to the last Friends Per Second episode. Because I think that's when Gerard talked about it. You know, new gameplay mechanics, new music. They it's him. It's the guy. Transcripts are down here now. Here it is. He and I, good. We hung out. And I raised money for charity for four or five days, so we're we're exhausted. But uh, well, other than why, I'm, I feel pretty good. I don't know about exhausted, you, but, but Monday successful. Oh yeah, Monday was well. rough. Yeah, yeah, we raised eighty-one thousand dollars for dementia hey! research. And, yeah, it was crazy. Soul. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It. We uh, we also got to debut uh, gameplay reveal for Penny's Big Breakaway, the new Evening Star game by the guys who made Sonic Mania. That was really cool. Was cool. Really cool. Yeah. Interesting. World right. premiere. Take that, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, it was it was just a, a lot of uh, if you ever want to see uh, Lucy laugh at my pain, there's lots of, of footage of me getting bodied online somewhere. So a lot, lots of waxings and hot sauces. Oh, I got to wax a couple people. Yeah. Wow. Waxed him. And is it Barry? He was, Barry. Yeah, yeah. Barry Kramer. Yeah. 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 Right. He was so good. There's a point I watched the video back and I didn't realize that you can hear him go. <laughs> Like such a, <laughs> <laughs> a little tiny. <laughs> Love it. Um, no, it was so fun. But also, I think one of the things I'm also very glad for, like super glad to be there, highlight a bunch of indies, and obviously raise a lot of money. But we got to hang out with Tam on Monday and just chill out and have like a really nice lunch and just. She probably not doesn't know anything about this. She's just like, oh yeah, I like being a part of charity, and then and then just like dips. So don't don't think that as, as, until we get any other information don't think that anybody else is a part of this besides gerard because it is his charity at the end of the day this is so interesting this is so interesting it's so curious they mentioned it again um my buddy vernon had a show called scare to care which was like a yearly um charity show he would do for camp Casim, and uh it was basically just bringing a bunch of content creators together to play scary games and um you know charity and so he was like i wish we had a charity that we could donate to and i was like oh i i run my own charity called the open hand foundation and all the money that we aggregate i mean i started it when i was a young a young boy with my dad you know oh. my mom who had oh wait all the money all the money that we aggregate go i i run my own charity called the open hand foundation and all the money that we aggregate i mean i started it when i was a young a young boy with my dad in honor of my mom who had dementia and so uh we just every year we try and raise as much money as possible and then we go work with you know alzheimer's association of america university of san francisco um association for ftd which is what my mom had ftd so we've like worked with big and small organizations across the board and he was like it'd be really cool if we did a show 
all about raising money for people who are making huge headways in, in dementia research and prevention and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, I'd love to. We have the organization to do it. We just, you know, need to come up with a theme. And so um, we kind of looked at the gaming space and said, hey, OK, wait. So, yeah, he never says. Yeah, he never says that they donated the money. He just says that they, we've worked with them. Wow. Yeah, because he just says how much money we've raised. We work with them, but never we donated money. And then, oh, wait, but then there's that quote by that guy who was fired before the company, before the, the organization was even put in place, saying thank you for the contribution. Are they actually? It's so weird because I was like, if this is malicious, then the money, we would see the money going somewhere else. But we don't. It's just sitting there. So what is what is this man's plan? I don't get it. It's so weird. He's such a weird guy. It's kind of. It feels weird to say this, but it's like it's nice to be a charity stream thing that's not focused around like alcohol too, in a weird way. It was just like very chill vibes and like oh and very chill. What's going on? What's happening? Claiming <laughs> the money glory. is actually given to people who know how to use it. And all that money goes to dementia research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money. And okay, that's the okay. Here's the lie. All the money goes to that. Well, maybe, maybe he's gonna claim like, oh, what we mean is that it will go to them. It, yeah, it's going to them. It's going Help to them. Help them do their thing. Why is he claiming they are helping the victims and even the families of people with dementia? Uh, guys, welcome to Indyland. For those of you who don't know what we're doing, we're raising money for dementia research and prevention, helping victims who not only have dementia, but the families of those around them. Why is Open Hand still claiming it supports the UCSF on its website? Open Hand assured me they have done nothing illegal, because if they had, they would have been caught by the IRS. However, I never mentioned legality in my original email. I'm not sure why they brought up the IRS, but this assumes the IRS is some kind of omnipresent being that immediately detects fraud the moment it happens and intervenes. This notion is simply untrue. Many crimes, especially fraud, go undetected. And unless you do something especially egregious on your filings, nothing will be flagged to the IRS. In saying that, however, these filings don't seem to be done properly, and they aren't even signed, which is definitely a legal requirement. But now that they brought it up, if the filings do show an accurate account of what happened, I do think this is illegal and would be considered charity fraud. Generally, taking money by dishonest means is considered fraud. You just can't tell people to give you money under a false pretense. And you can't wait 10 years until you're oh, caught no. before doing something with it either. In this case, Open Hand lied for many years saying that it was funding organizations it wasn't. And it was using those lies in order to get money from the public. Open Hand finishes by saying they continue to search for a partnership that meets their standards. And if I have any recommendations, they will consider it. I don't know why they are asking me for my input. Open Hand You're has already charity. been lying for 10 years, saying that it's been going to the UCSF, the Alzheimer's Association, and other organizations across the world. Why not send it there? Open Hand has had 10 years to find somewhere to send the money to, and I'm sure there are plenty of acceptable organizations that would gladly welcome its contribution. Truthfully, I just don't buy their explanation. If they really were looking for someone to give it to, they would have been honest about that to the public. They wouldn't have lied and said they were giving it to someone they weren't. Why are they still doing fundraisers when they admit here, if you choose to believe them, they have no idea where that money will go? Why do they not ask the public where to send the money? It is their money, after all. People have been donating- Honestly, they could just ask, hey guys, where do you think we should be sending this money? I, I, think, I think even people- I think you, even you know, like, hey, we're looking for like the best place or the place that we thought we were going to go without like trying to shit on them as the place that we thought they were going to go. We they they, they don't spend the money the correct way that we think that it, it should be spent. Do you guys have any uh, information? Do you have any recommendations? He could have just like sent. He's a big content creator. He could have sent out tweets. He could have put in like a a YouTube video. A couple of them could have, but it's just it's weird. Raising money to fight dementia, and having fun while playing the new indie. Indie Land Games, please come join us. Their hard-earned money for 10 years. They all believe their money is hmm. all. People have been donating their hard-earned money for 10 <gasps> Not Gina! No! They got Gina too? They didn't... <laughs> no, they scammed Gina, darling. We're raising money. I like Gina. I like Gina. And and she got she got wrapped in... She got wrapped up in this too. This poor girl. 
10 years. They all believe their money is going to a good cause. People have been championing Indyland for years, declaring they are fighting dementia. Gaming developers, YouTube influencers, celebrities have all donated their time, money, and effort to this event. Yeah, thinking like it was people, doing have, something people have gotten when hurt. It just wasn't. They've Sponsors been have silly. invested money and equipment into a charity that did nothing with the money. I responded to Open Hand, hoping to get clarification on a few details, and asking if they thought it was appropriate to continue to ask for money when they aren't contributing any of it. They reiterated they believe their behavior was legal and ethical. Apparently, me taking issue with the fact they've lied for years years and kept all of the money they have ever received is both unwarranted and unfounded. Clearly from these statements, this all donors funds are conserved with diligence and foresight, earmarked for research endeavors that alive with the stringent criteria. Are we understand necessary to due diligence and charitable engagement? The insinuation of wrongdoing on the part of open hands is both unwarranted and unfounded. We conduct our operation within the bounds of legal and ethical standards. The implications of the contrary is baseless. Our foundation has always acted in good faith, and we take any suggestion of impropriety very seriously. We stand firm in our record of integrity. You've done nothing. Open Hand feels as though this is acceptable this good. behavior from a charity. They closed by saying they do not intend to issue further public comments on these matters, confirming that from Open Hand's perspective, this isn't an issue worthy of their time or comment. The last thing I needed to do was to talk to Gerard and get his side of the story. And with the help of Muta from some ordinary game, Gamers, we set up a call. According to Gerard, he didn't find out the funds had not been forwarded to any organizations until 2022, and claims that since that time, he has been actively trying to find somewhere to send the money. Isn't it your organization? Aren't you like a co- didn't you make it or aren't you like a co-founder of it? And you haven't looked at how the money is spent at all? Ever? Like literally ever? So in the 10 years that you've been working for this charity, as the person running the charity, you've never known where the money has gone? Because usually when you run a charity, the biggest things that you do when, the, when, when you run a charity is show the receipt of you donating the money, you know, like that's usually the the big thing is like that's usually what gets the most amount of clout. Like it gets more clout than even you running the charity to begin with is is like the showing the receipt of look we we did it right. That he was only stamping his name on it. Who's running the charity then? Is it his brother? You weren't notified that the money was sitting there the whole time. I knew it was sitting there. Mm -hmm. at a certain point and that's what ma made me proactively go about it like i was made aware in 2021 when the, the, the money hadn't moved yet and that's what made me go that's not fucking cool and that's when i got personally involved to move it and did anyone uh, 2021 last year wait so why has it still not been donated it's it's been a year so there's been at least two charities maybe like one and a half two charities streams that he's known the money has not been donated and he's and he still doesn't have a place where he can donate the money for a year yeah did anyone tell you that the, the money was going somewhere before then were you being misled no 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 one told me anything i was i assumed that it was all going to a charity and i i assumed incorrectly whether or not you believe this Who's will be we up to then? You. However, I will note that even if he is telling the truth, despite learning this in 2022, his behavior did not change. In 2023, he continued to make claims that Open Hand was supporting the UCSF, the Alzheimer's Association, AFTD, and many more, a year after learning that it wasn't. Trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more, these statements were from just several weeks ago. Gerard has also been a director of Open Hand since 2014, so it would take a lot to convince me he didn't know. Yeah, there's, there is Gerard C. Khalil, director. Who's, yeah, who's the president? Charles Khalil. Who is this? Who are you? Who's Charles Khalil? Who is that? And they all live in the same house. Or at least, or at least this, this, this is the address of, uh, that they're putting down. Maybe his dad? Jack is his brother. So this is the brother who's the vice president. So he knows that the money has not been spent. Maybe this is his sister. And then this is the president. Maybe that's his dad. So his dad runs the charity and he hasn't spent any of the money. Even though, like, I mean, being a director is pretty high up. Is a director and he's not been directing? I wonder who's answering all these emails. It's this guy. Jack? Is that his name? Jack? 
Jackie? Jacu? Yeah, this guy who's this guy's the one answering all the emails. We haven't heard anything about this guy. Haven't heard anything about this girl. And then Gerard is the is our is our YouTuber friend. Just pronounced Jock. Okay, well. Learn something new every day. 14. So it would take a lot to convince me he didn't know what was happening with the money he was raising. Ask yourself this question. If you raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity, do you think you would be interested in where that money was going? Would you at least check to see if the money was being sent? He no was just the not answer, worrying about it. would still it. be completely responsible for what happened with that money. The most important question at this time is whether or not the Khalil c crime family. <laughs> the Khalil crime family. This is just so weird. Yeah, I don't. OK, so it seems like none of the money is gone. OK, the money isn't gone. It's just so weird that they it's just been sitting there and they haven't been doing anything with it. And he also didn't know that that it was gone at all. I know this. There's this person on the bird app. The assertion that I'm seeing that Gerard is pocketing charity money uh, or doing anything nefarious is absurd. Gerard literally states in these videos that the money is all in a charity bank and fully accounted for with the intent to make the most efficient use of the donations. In 10 years, I guess. It might look strange to someone poking around, but it is slanderous to make a, a cancel video like this without evidence that the funds have been misused. As far as I've seen... Carl Jacobs hasn't said that he's been spent, that he spent the money in, in, in like an incorrect way. He just said that he's not spent, that he's lying about spending it or lying about the money going places. And what, what does working and giving the impression that the money's being spent when it's literally not? Jacobs, my bad. Carl Jacobs. You're just going to call him Carl. Fuck his last name. He's, he's Carl now. The transparency could not be better, certainly. Uh, the transparency could have been better, certainly. But uh, to imply anything illegal is really unfair by definition. This is not fraud. Gerard absolutely is the man he presents himself as to the public. He's one of the most generous kind of... Okay, this is this person? Okay, never mind. This, this, is a, this is a gagger comment. That's a comment from a gagger. Massive. That's a huge gagger. He's the best, most nicest, most coolest, most never do anything wrongest, most goodest boy I've ever known. And so that's why I know he would never do anything wrong because he's the coolest, most goodest, most, most amazingest boy ever. It's, it's, it's wrong to say he did anything wrong. Okay. Also, De Dexerto is... Oh, I mean, we'll, I, I want to check out the Some Ordinary Gamers video because, you know, Carl Jacobs isn't saying that he stole the money, but it is, it, this is a big problem. But Dexerto is kind of lying here. YouTuber The Completionist is being called out for allegedly pocketing charity funds. That's not what they said. <laughs> well, sorry, that's not what Carl said. I don't, I don't know if, like, Mudahar is going to say this, but he might. I don't know. I, I guess we'll find out. Anyways. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. I'm gonna start you off with a question. When you donate to a charity live stream and that money leaves your bank account and it goes to the charity, do you expect that money to actually be going to the charity that you're donating to or do you expect it to sit in a bank account for years? What do you think is the more logical option? Do you want your money to go that year or do you want it to just sit in a bank account doing nothing to help a cause? I will say the big problem with the money simply just sitting there is that like inflation's going to kick in, especially how inflation's been for the last couple of years. Them not spending the money just means the money is just being worth less and less and less every single year. So it 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 it, it actually is a big problem with it just sitting there. Like, sure, they're not like pocketing it, okay, but the money not being used means the money is worth less every year that you firmly believe in? Well, that's the question we're looking into today. Now, the YouTuber that we're actually discussing is known as The Completionist. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you might be wondering, who is The Completionist? The Completionist we're going to skip forward a bit. There are massive, like, news articles to see. It's feel-good stuff. But this is where I feel like these uh, news sites should have dug a little bit deeper, because what me and uh, Carl found was very questionable. All right, so how do you vet a charity yourself, ladies and gentlemen? To vet a charity, you go to any of their websites, and usually at the very bottom, you'll find something like a tax ID, an EIN number. For the Open Hand Foundation, it's 30082751. You copy that, and you can basically go to the IRS charity lookup right here. So again, it's as very simple as going to Google, typing in IRS lookup, and here you can see tax exempt organization search. You click on that and you put in the EIN number in this field and hit the search button. And that takes you to the Open Hand Foundation. You open that one up right here and you can see a lot of their letters too. For instance, this determination letter that shows that they've been active since 2014. And again, this is their... Uh, th
you know, Alzheimer's research for these charitable causes. And of course, if you look at their balance sheets, at the end of 2014, they had $33,756 sitting in cash in their accounts. So then we go to the year 2000. Thousand and twenty nine dollars. Point okay. is, they still had zero the thing dollars in contributions paid. That started them off with two fifteen that year. Ended them with three twenty five eight fifteen. The year two thousand and twenty. We will see more of the call decade, though. One hundred and twenty two thousand dollars that they've earned in four hundred and forty two thousand dollars, raising six hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, there's a bit more. Money. It's raised six hundred thousand uh, dollars. That seems about right. Indyland is raising six hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, there's a bit more money that they've earned from various other events and more contributions. With Gerard uh, to get his side of the story, and he confirms that the money is still sitting in the account. Um, to answer your question, Carl, I don't have an answer. You know, I think that's my fuck up. Um, I I have personally donated to AFTD and Alzheimer's Association over the years, and that's where again I assume the money was going there to support them as we were talking negotiations um, about working with them. I mm -hmm. I don't really have a, a true answer for that, and that's on me completely, and I will own up to that. Um, but you know, again, it doesn't fucking matter. You guys are gonna say what you're gonna say, and I can't stop it. But um, the important thing is that all the money is still in the account. None of it's been erroneously. It's all above board. Like it's not, it's not hiding in a Cayman account or anything like that. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing about 501Cs is that like, if I did any of that, the minute I did any malpractice of that nature, literally the government would be like, hey, we're coming after you. And that's right. you know, at least legally speaking, everything's above board. And I understand that the the question isn't so much legality and so much more about morality in you know me advertising this event and and showing people sponsors and all that stuff. Now, I think it's quite interesting to almost make it sound like this is about to be some crazy drama story, when in reality, this isn't some tabloid journalism we go for. I kind of find a weird insinuation of that a little bit insulting for me and my colleagues like Carl, uh, people like CoffeeZilla, uh, people like Barely Sociable, who do deep dives and investigative pieces on situations like this. I guess what I'm asking you guys is, what do you want me to do as soon as possible? If it's like, hey, Gerard, we want you to shut up and take the L so we can make content, that's fine. If that's what you guys think is the way to go, to call it a scam, sure. But I'm not trying to scam anyone. I would never try and scam in honor of my mom, like, this is, I, I would not be outward facing knowing that I can get right to the coals for this. This isn't drama. This is erroring at best at severe negligence, or it could go into actual charitable fraud. Now this definition came from legalmatch.com, which actually said charity fraud is when someone takes advantage of a charitable or nonprofit organization for their own personal gain. Fraud is defined as intentional de deception or misrepresentation made for personal gain. Defrauding a charity can be anything from falsely claiming to be a victim of the disaster in order to get money from a charity, to stealing donations from a collection tin, to setting up a fake charity and pocketing the donations. However, fraudulent activity can also occur when people make dishonest or inflated claims about how much money they've raised or how much it has helped the cause. And again, the dishonest claims are ones that we're going to be looking into now. So again, even with the legal match definition. Listen, when somebody when somebody comes at you like that, I think it's I, I think it should like sure, I guess he can get offended by that, but also I think it's it's Gerard can get offended by them insinuating that he's doing something wrong with with the money when he could wholeheartedly just be like actually looking for something like to spend the money on but at the same time i don't know it's just super weird I, I i think it is very strange that the money just hasn't been spent for 10 years and he hasn't looked into it for 10 years hasn't seen the money be hasn't seen like like a receipt for 10 years nothing for 10 years that nobody has just ever looked into this i guess until right now where until my bad 2018 or my guess i, I guess not 10 years what he said well, he said 2020 is when he became knowledgeable of it. So what, like a couple years it's been? No, no bad. Sorry, 2022. 2022 is, became, is when he became knowledgeable of no money being spent. One of the most common ways to commit charity fraud include pretending to be a charity or falsely claiming to be affiliated with a legitimate... Subs, buy the shirt, buy the coin, buy in... Let's listen closely. Uh, guys, welcome to Indyland. For those of you who don't know what we're doing, we're raising money for dementia research and prevention, helping victims who not only have dementia, but the families of those around them. Uh, it's obviously a very important cause. Uh, I can talk today near and dear to my heart. Uh, I was 10 years old when my mom got dementia, and it's been a journey for me and my family. And so this cause is obviously uh, very personal. And that's why we're here today. Bits, donations, subs, buy the shirt, buy the coin, buy indie games, all that stuff. All of it is going to the benefit of helping others for this charity event. So again, if that is a true statement, then the actual filings would reflect that. Again, we looked through every single aspect of their... Of okay. It's also on our website. ...without a significant portion being diverted to administrative expenses. We asked Gerard about this, and it pretty much seems like what they have said to us in writing matches what he told us in an interview. Whether it's UCSF or a partner, it's also on our website, because we don't have any other benefactors currently. Like we're, I, that's why I was like, well, they're taking care of it, but... Nothing was ever brought to my attention. I just knew that conversations were happening between Alzheimer's Association of America, AFTD Foundation, um, UCSF started a new organization, I think called like Bluefin or Blue Group, which is like supposed to be their 501c um, part of their organization. 
So I know I have a paper trail of us talking to other organizations as early as 2020 and 2021 in an attempt to pay them what they were owed. And most of the conversations we had from from um, some of the bigger orgs like Alzheimer's, they were like, look, if you're not going to pay more than six figures or, or six plus figures of what they asked for, then you're just going to waste it. So the goal on the back end for my family that I've been told is like, we're just going to raise a bunch of money and then give it to one org and like make a bigger impact rather than just giving smaller donations that don't move the needle. Now, I think this is a very, very dumb point in the sense that, again, bear with me. If I go to an actual charity right now, for instance, the Alzheimer's Association, one thing you'll see is they'll ask me to gift an amount that is as low as $35. Now, again, if the idea was that a small donation was somehow going to be more uh, geared towards financing this organization's administrative costs versus actually helping Alzheimer's and contributing to the cure, then they should just tell you, why the fuck would you donate $35? Donate $35,000 instead. That's going to matter more. See, See, the idea of this money going to a doctor's salary is again like, who do you think is going to do the research on this anyways? Of course it's going to go to salary for researchers, doctors. I'm, I literally am, am, am about to like donate all this money today and, and, and prior to that earlier this week and the week before and I've just been sitting here crippled trying to figure out the best way to handle this because I felt like if I donated the money the minute you guys emailed me, it'd be a situation of, well, he's trying to hide it and he's admitting guilt by doing that. And I never felt that way, but I understand completely that you guys could easily argue that. And it would just make me look more like a scumbag. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted, you know, I, I wanted to write by you guys and what you think. When you guys got the email and I said, please tell us about benefactors, that was genuine because I haven't found a benefactor that I'm completely happy with. And I want to make sure that this money goes to a good cause in honor of my mom. And I'm upset that the conversations I've had haven't gone the way that I wanted. And I'm willing at this point to just donate the money to whoever. I want it to go in the right spot. Using his mom's name in vain? I just realized that? No, I wouldn't say that. Listen, the only thing, the, the problem here so far is not that him like pocketing money or stealing money. It's the, the biggest thing would be the negligence of not getting it somewhere, right? In, in, in like the 10 years, apparently him getting information that if he only donated like a hundred thousand dollars as opposed to five million dollars or something that it wouldn't that it wouldn't make a big difference yes it's, it's i would say it's mismanagement it, it, it's not actively malicious as far as far as we've seen as far as since we can still see the money it's just weird there's no there was no weird there's no communication people thought their money was doing more than it actually was which i which i do think is a problem especially in in, in like the youtuber space where there have been so many terrible people who do such terrible things with money like i i, I really feel like it it helps fuel more distrust for giving to charitable causes but oh, whoops i muted it like a dummy like a dummy dumbo in the right spot yeah. i don't want it to go to some some doctor's salary or 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 some expense bill for a, a massive organization that it's not going to do anything for there's probably going to be administ now it will probably go to a doctor's salary but the doctor is probably going to be doing the research right i mean what what does he want the money to I, I don't know it is weird saying that like what does he want the money to go to you know because i thought it was going to be like some some administrative person's salary like I, I would rather my money go to a doctor's salary who's who's there in the lab um you know uh, battling the the dementia gene in in the test tube or something whatever the fuck they do to figure out what's going on but i don't know what what what's his plan where does he want the money to go administrative costs. But it doesn't mean that charities only function when you give them a lot of money. In fact, a lot of charitable donations are just drips and drabs that add up to serious amounts. And based on the filings, with over $600,000 sitting in an account, that's going to do an actual difference in the world. At least And also, I mean, don't you think it would be up to the the charity to if if like the if like a big amount is going to do a lot more, don't you think they would save the money then? You would give them money and then they would save it in an account to then use later? more difference than just sitting in a bank account anyways. Now again, Gerard will tell us, how do you make this right? And again, instead of worrying about how the internet perceives you after watching this video or this news story, you should just donate the money to the charities that you've said. Here, let's see. Uh, money was being donated until very recently he found out that no, the money was still sitting in the account and it actually started somewhat of a civil war within this organization as to let's donate this money now because he's a public facing figure of this organization. He's going to face a lot of the backlash. I knew it was sitting there mm -hmm. at a certain point and that's what made me proactively go about it. Like, Do you know when that point was? I was made aware in 2021 where the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. And that's what made me go, that's not fucking cool. And that's when I got personally involved to move it. And did anyone? Last year, 2022. 
Yeah, did anyone tell you that the, the money was going somewhere before then? Were you being misled? No. No, no, no. No one told me anything. I was. I assumed that it was all going to a charity, and I, I assumed it correctly. But the reality is, if you even knew that, how could you prepare for Indie Land 2023 or anything? This is a glaring issue that you needed to fix a long time ago. Now, from the statements that Gerard made on his streams for Indie just, Land 2020, I don't know, just, and it is really strange. Land, I don't know. So let's check. I, I mostly want to check some of the some of the clips that he pulled. I think it's tied to. Uh, all bits, all donations, all super chats, all YouTube memberships, basically anything that's tied to donating or subscribing in a financial way to us is going to charity. We're not touching any of it. It's all going for a good cause. Uh, we're going to have a great week and we have a lot of games. So when he says he's not touching any of it, when we talked to Gerard, he said that there was a couple of years that IndieLand actually dipped into the Open Hand Foundation to cover some expenses. So this is a false statement that's being made. So IndieLand is a separate thing from Open Hand. Um, Correct. But yes. were you saying that Open Hand was paying expenses for IndieLand though? Uh, only only some years and, and no more than a couple thousand dollars depending on, on the year. If it was too much money just to make it right because you're not supposed to really do that, when, especially when you have no operating expenses, um, I, I'd only reimburse myself uh, uh, and did it appropriately through the Open Hand when applicable, but not every year and, and no more than, than a couple thousand dollars uh, maximum. If you touch any money from... Wait, I want to hear that again actually dipped into the Open Hand Foundation to cover some expenses. So this is a false statement that's being made. So IndieLand is a separate thing from Open Hand. Um, Correct, but yes. But were you saying that Open Hand was paying expenses for IndieLand though? Uh, only only some years and, and no more than a couple thousand dollars depending on, on the year. If it was too, only some expenses. Um, Correct, but yes. But were you saying that Open Hand was paying expenses for IndieLand though? Uh, only only some years and, and no more than a couple thousand dollars depending on on the year if it was too much money just to make it right because you're not supposed to really do that when you, especially when you have no operating expenses um, I, I'd only reimburse myself uh, uh, and did it appropriately through the open hand when applicable but not every year and and no more than than a couple thousand dollars uh, maximum if you touch any money that's really not that's not good I was really I was more on I, I was like oh no what did Gerard do? Oh, that's this is this is a problem. I he should just get it right, but at least the money's still there. To well, a couple, but a year. Well, this is dipping into the money to reimburse yourself a couple years. I don't like that. I really, I really don't like that. There's, I mean, you can. I get the operating costs, but the operating costs of indie land being paid for by the charity and then saying we don't touch any of the money you could have literally just said we we like a maximum of like this amount is going to be used to help fund the stream obviously and then and then we're going to use the rest on everything else right but then you can you, you you'll be able to see everything if if we do anything wrong but i don't I, yeah I don't, I don't like that yeah okay he's kind of got him there they kind of got him there Money from charity, even if it's for operating expenses, that's not money that's all going to charity. Not all of it at all. And of course, even when you look at the filings, zero dollars has been contributed or granted to some of these organizations that they claim to help. Uh, all the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom. And all that money goes to Dementia Research. We don't touch any of it. We just work with the people who do need the money and we help them do their thing. So here he claims that he works with the people to help them do their thing. They don't touch any of the money, even though as far as expenses have gone for operating their organization, it's been up to $125,000, rivaling a net contribution of zero throughout their existence to these actual people that they claim to be helping, which again, it's been up to $125,000, even though as far as expenses with the people to help them do their thing, they don't touch any of the money, even though as far as expenses have gone for operating their organization, it's been up to $125,000, rivaling a net contribution of zero throughout their existence to these actual people that they claim to be helping, which again, is just fucked up. We are raising money for dementia research in honor of my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, working with organizations like USF. Oh, wow. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that was kind of right, right? $100,000 has been taken. $100,000 has been uh, taken uh, for operating costs, but $0,000 have been used for actual dementia research. We can take a look at this again. Their balance sheet from uh, 2022. Contribution, gifts, grants. Yeah. Counting fees, other expenses, $10,000. Total expenses and reimbursements, $11,000.
Okay, so like $11,000 there. Operating and administrative, $29,000. Oh. Okay. So that's $29,000 there. $6,000 here. You know, $13,000 here. Yeah, yeah, this it's between 29 and and like $10,000 every single year that they 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 take as operational costs. And Gerard said specifically some of that money sometimes goes to himself. Mm, I don't like that. <clears throat> I don't like that. Uh, uh, FTT gave to me and that, who he's working with, which again contrasts with their actual statement they gave to me and Carl, where they were just evaluating potential beneficiaries. Again, if you could name these people, why couldn't you write a check to them? $600. $50,000 is a very, very, very good amount to start actually making a difference in the fight against Alzheimer's. And even if you didn't have that amount, even if it was like $60 that you raised, because you raised it in charitable like funds, you told the audience who you were raising it for, who you were working with, you have an obligation, a legal obligation to donate to those exact organizations. And again, to also respond to Gerard when we were talking, it's not about writing a check to any organization. It's about writing the amounts for those exact organizations that you've been listing throughout the years. Because for anybody watching, for anybody looking at this who's ever donated to IndieLand, you want your money to go to the places that you were told. For me personally, this was a really important project for FlyQuest to sponsor. I've had people in my immediate family that have suffered from dementia. Um, There's a new really clip. close to me, so I've personally experienced it. And so when this you know, initiative kind of came across my desk, um, yeah, it was easy to, to approve. Um, also, just for context, I'm, I'm Brian Anderson. I'm the CEO of FlyQuest. So I'm not sure I actually introduced myself here at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, great to meet everyone on the stream. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and so yeah, just really, really excited to, to help you guys out, participate. You know, thank you so much for using the space. And also wanted to do a quick announcement as well. Sure. Um, FlyQuest is going to be supporting this initiative, not just for the space, but we're also going to be contributing $15,000 to wow. the donations. Wow. Let's fire it off. Wow. Do you think he knew that the money that he gave from his organization just sat in an account when he popped the confetti? That's a question I want to see. What, what, what do you think the CEO of FlyQuest is going to think when he sees this whole situation unfold before his eyes? That's the most messed up thing in this entire situation, too. But ignore the fact that this is a CEO donating a lot of money to even average individuals who are giving money away in the chase of $2,000, right? From one user who said, Gerard, it was a pleasure meeting you and Frazier with my buddy Airdorf a few months back. Big fan. Thanks for supporting game devs like us. Dementia runs in my family as well. So IndieLand always holds a special place in my heart. This is more like, you know, taking down character, looking at people who could have been impacted. Okay. We need a justice league for anti-scammer YouTubers. <laughs> the internet is so thoroughly poisoned our idea of morality that Gerard thinks being exposed to chair exposed for charity fraud is frivolous drama. I'm not sure if he necessarily says that. I think he's talking more about the way they're going to be. I, I think I think he care I think he was worrying about the way that they're going to be characterizing what happened. Let me get this straight. This organization was founded nine years ago and they're still trying to find a benefactor after nine years. In my personal opinion, I really would think that they would have found a benefactor before they made a charity. Like they know where they want to donate. And so that's why they made a place to donate, which is the, ch that's why they made like, like a, a thing to be able to collect donations. I didn't think it was going to be, let's help people. Okay, now how do we do that? <laughs> I don't know, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's a bit peculiar. Peculiar, let's look at this comment section. This isn't going to be the best, mostly because De Dexerto was literally just lying about what uh, Mudahar and Carl said about the situation, but there's a lot of YouTubers in here who are obviously pretty upset about this characterization. This is not what happened, but go off. This is Ant Dude. Is this actual Ant Dude? This is this, this, this. I think this is actual Ant Dude. I mean, he is being called out for it. Whatever, it's true. That's not calling. That's not how calling someone out works. You kind of uh, need the information to be accurate. Until Gerard pulls an unofficial pulls out an official statement on the matter after pro Jared situation many years ago, you think people would have learned by now? But no, after pro Jared situation long ago, many years ago, the last thing I want to do was jump the gun and immediately get angry at someone without having the full story. They aren't being called out for pocketing it. They are, however, 100% have not donated the money in multiple years. Sure, 
it's the it's it's a shame big news outlets are spreading misinformation okay so he's just more mad about dexerto which i would i would say sure <laughs> oh no <laughs> Somebody said it's ironic that the money was supposed to go to dementia research and he forgot to donate it. Come here. Come here. Oh. Hi. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, it'll make Boo very sad. I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed. Join the frenzy. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you, Boo.